Hey guys, Trek Yards here. I'm Captain Foley. I am Commodore Goggins. And we've got some more Discovery stuff to look at. It's Discovery Week. A lot of stuff dropped at San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. And we were both slacking. We were both away for the weekend, doing our own thing, actually living it our lives. was life. And anyway, we're making up for it. We're filming a bunch today. Yeah. And today we're going to be talking about the Klingon Torchbearer armor. Yes. And we saw this in the first trailer for about yeah. 3.0 seconds. Didn't know what it was. Three seconds. I, know, I, don't know. I was going to say 3.1, but I, I failed to <laughs> zero. Long day. A lot of filming. And now we see it in full detail. And it's mm. Klingon, Stuart, we're told. I can see a few Klingon elements. I mean, the sure. logo that tells it's Klingon. Well, other than that, there's a few more, maybe. So, but yeah. yeah. First impression when you saw it, though, because I know this came out uh, when we were both doing things, but I know we definitely kept up to date with them independently. Uh, we haven't talked about them yet. This is all fresh for us. <laughs> what mm -hmm. did you think when you, when you saw it? Um, I thought it was very cool, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it didn't really read Klingon. It did tie in with the ceremonial kind of spike sure. armor that they are wearing. Yes. Uh, so there is that visual tie in there. But it could be any alien robot or suit or whatever from any other franchise, I think, without the Klingon symbol. Uh, I do like the fact that it's got the knives on the boots, I, though. Yes. That's pretty cool. And there's a tease for that later. Yeah, if we, yeah. If we cut to the second picture, which is that full length, as you were alluding to. Um, yeah, no, I think if you, if you say a year ago, took this in front of a panel of 50 sci-fi fans and said, this is going to belong to a reboot of one of these franchises, Star Trek, Star Wars, Stargate, Battlestar, Farscape, Firefly, uh, Halo, Babylon, like, which one do you think? Star Trek would not be anyone's guess. No. Um, I would uh, say the new Cylons for Battlestar. Well, t t <laughs> yeah, hum human Cylon battle armor, or in ba Battlestar uh, Babylon Five, you know, easily a non hyper non uniform yeah. or something, um, or anything in Farscape, you know, any rate. Yeah, it, it doesn't say Klingon whatsoever, but that said, it does say Discovery Klingons quite a lot. To a T. To a T. <laughs> And if they're uh, ancient Klingons, that's awesome. Then we've got this thing. Now, I did read up um, after the fact that this the Torchbearer, which is a weird name in itself, um, we just saw the EVA armor, but it's actually something specific. It's both armor and ceremonial, and this is a one-off one armor that's one generation. It's meant to unify the houses, I believe is what I read. So this person hmm. is the person to the, like, prophesy to you bring it all together and you have to you're not like you're not picked you're destined to be a, a, a torchbearer wow so it's not art, like it's a really important thing um what do you think now wow wow that's an interesting <laughs> story element and that I, could explain that. the odd, I, odd I think that's right I, I don't know um again it's I don't know it's very ornate and almost seems ceremonial which That's makes good. sense in yep. that in that instance, right? So yep. the faceplate is very confusing to me, though. <sighs> yeah, um, it's beautiful. Like this third oh, picture absolutely. is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't I don't know if you can tell, but if you go to picture number three, there's like a little carved, almost like a cameo brooch thing, uh, in oh, the armor, whoa. like a, a white face. Yeah, there's also one at the top as well, hairish. Huh. Yeah. So there's a lot of detail and stuff going into this. Um, that's a very interesting story point, though. That's I like that. Now I'm excited again. <laughs> I yeah. hear these little bits and I just get fired up. <laughs> I mean, that's a big part of the story, I believe, is, is they're trying to say these Klingons are trying to unify the houses. Although one, one posted 12 houses, one posted 12 houses, one said hundreds of houses, so I, I guess 12 major houses or something. Um, uh. yeah, well, within the Klingons, I think we had said very early on there's factions and, and whatnot. I believe yeah. some of the character bios said the same thing. This is an example, I think, of when you can 3D print things. Because all these intricate pieces that, I mean, t I mean those little, you know, uh, p pieces on here that are so tiny, to, yeah. you know, mold those in resin to be strong enough, or you just 3D print them and you can assemble them and just the absolutely immaculate detail in the paint job. I mean, it, it, it doesn't look like a prop, really. I mean, you can see if you really think, well, okay, that's just resin right there, but it looks really nice. I mean, it looks sort of plasticky a little bit, but that could just be polymers of an armor. You know, armor sh yeah. in the future wouldn't just be metal, would it? It'd be, it'd be stronger than metal, it'd be more useful than metal, you know, lighter than metal. Um, 
But I, the, the front piece, I mean, I can see sort of separation lines. They can take it off like this. Yeah. I can see that. Um, and I'm assuming it's like a heads up display, refractive shielding for the light, something. I guess, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What do you what do you okay, what do you make of that when you see that front view in the first picture? What do you make of, of what that means? I I have no idea. <laughs> it, it it ties in with the sarcophagus ship and the intricacies yes. that are oh, involved yes. with its its detailing and its uh very like cathedral like, like we've said, um mm. windows and oh, such. Yeah. It's, Just, that's very much like a stained glass window yeah, look at the yeah, front of this yeah, helmet. Right, right. Um, what that means, though, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it seems impractical almost, but it, like you said, if there's a display in there of some sort, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it would be like an Iron Man display. You yep. can have anything on the outside, and that looks intimidating as hell. Like, I wouldn't want that coming at me because it doesn't look like anything I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's, what purpose it serves, but, I mean, it looks cool doing it, whatever it's doing. <laughs> How amazing would it be if we could, you know, if this all really canon and time travel and stuff, you take a dude in this armor into the TNG chrono scenes, you know, when Worf is getting tried, and this guy walks in, and they're like, oh, the Torchbearer, or like, what the hell's that? I don't, none of us recognize this. It's like, yeah, I know, it's totally different aesthetics. It's like, oh, reboot, yeah. whoops, universe. <laughs> it's, I mean, there's the deep, I mean, I've, you know, not all the Klingons ever should have worn the same damn armor. That's kind of ridiculous, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to be so different and so unique, and also those talons are like, you know, I mean, this is an intricate spacesuit. These teeny little gloves, I mean, it's amazing. Um, and, I mean, if we get a picture, um, I mean, four, again, like all these um, vertebra, I mean, I know we know the Klingons have a very strong vertebra structure, that's a part of them. Mm -hmm. Also, kind of HR Geigery. Um, beautiful little details. Go to picture five. Why on earth would you have women cling on knee pads? Well, those are shin guards. They're not knee pads. They're well, down at the shin. Sure. Um, it could represent uh, the different houses uh, bowing to you, like they're down low. They're kind of in a that's cool. You know, one of those poses where it's like submissive. Um, it just looks cool, and it's. Like we've said with the ship, it's it's ornament and it's ornate for no reason particularly that, that we're aware of, yeah, except ceremonial purposes. It's just something that's fancy for the sake of a ceremony, some kind of ritual. I think they're also trying to prove what Trek can look like on a 2017 budget. And this is a yeah. flagship production for CBS All Access, and for those people who are not Trekkies who will see this and say, oh yeah, I've heard of Star Trek, I've seen the new movies, this will be like, damn... You know, look at the JJ films, they had limited budget. I mean, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. limited, but they just spread it over quite a lot. I think they're you know, pushing a lot of money into this. Probably mm -hmm. a lot on the down low, even, maybe. Just even really give an extra um, extra bit. That Pe being said, I hope they spent the money wisely and they had enough to build an engineering room so they don't have to use the Budweiser factory. Oh, God, like if they... The Shinzo or the Discovery. If they did, I'd be so angry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's canon, was... though. It's canon. Well, yeah, it's um, just bad spending practices we ran out of money so we had never mind anyway yes. but yeah the detail on this is awesome i love the daggers yes which, they look they look almost like bone they are like, immaculate they're incredible i mean again i think it's 3d printed i mean some of the stuff's just absolutely mm. gorgeous and i want to talk about those in a later video Stuart. i have other yes. pictures yes we do but i want to jump back to picture three again um, once again, this links to the idea of having this big head, because you can see it goes back further than mm -hmm. we would conventionally say Klingons had as heads. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think Klingons' hair is big enough to hide a head that's twice the size of a head. So again, once once again, this is a visually rebooted Klingon design. Feels more alien, because we so straight away say, well, that's not human, which is good. It's an alien. Um, yeah. Although, if you remember, in TNG, there's a specific episode where they show that these one race... It's one race of people make up look very similar to the uh, Odo's race, you know, the, the founders. They seeded life in the galaxy to make everyone look similar to us, and that's why everyone looks like people in makeup. The, the preservers, yeah. Well, possibly the preservers. I, I also, that, that's a great idea. Um, but that would sort of go against them. There is a canonical reason why everyone looks very similar, because we're seeded from another life form. So they, they can't really reboot that, because it's double canon, despite being 50 years of the trail. Anyway. Well, it's not re. 
these still fall in the category. They're still humanoid. They still have two arms, two legs, a head. You know, it's still... Yeah. Sure, it's an elongated skull, but it's still... Yeah, but... It, that still fits in that category. Yeah, but again, it doesn't link to what Klingons know they look like. But again, proto-Klingon, proto-Klingons, or parallel universe Klingons, maybe? Alternate dimensions, alternate timeline. Um, but again, it's this... They're definitely going fully in that style to have to build that into the armor and have the extra cranium space. Um, it's not just you know, the ceremonial class or something. It is everybody. Um, if we end on sort of this this big full picture, uh, and this was even the minute this was even the, this was even the miniature version that was on show. This wasn't even the full armor. I don't, know, mm. I don't know if they don't know if they can even make this in full armor. Like, I don't know if this is even a practical suit. If this was a CG creature. I don't know if it would be or wouldn't be, but look how limited of space they have physically. I mean, just look at those connection points of the arms. I mean, that's absolutely yeah. minimal. Same uh, with the knees, yeah. Maybe it's like an undersuit with pieces attached, and therefore it contours to human body more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which would be cool. Uh, but yeah, be beautiful piece. Wonderful design. We'll talk about the daggers a little bit later. Oh, did the boots have points? I was just looking at that right now. I was just can... zooming in. Yep, they do have a little point, which is a nice tie-in with the Klingon armor we all know and love. Yay. <laughs> Yay, one thing that's similar that you didn't screw up. Yay. Didn't screw up, just it's a very different... Hey, at least they didn't change the Klingon symbol. That that's has remained true. intact. That's true. Um, we know they're actually the Klingon Empire. That one symbol has survived. See, they they messed up the the, the Starfleet symbol by you know, it being everyone's symbol, but they kept the Klingon symbol. I'd be fascinated which Romulan symbol they go for, the TOS one or the uh, everyone else one. <laughs> Every other era. I, one. Think they, I think they'd go for the TNG one. If they Probably. I don't think they would hold the TOS one, because not a lot of people even know what that looks like. <laughs> yeah. and shame on you for not knowing. It's actually very similar to the Klingon one in terms of its... Uh, yeah. yeah. The color palette for sure. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Jinx. <laughs> Stuart. Send us out. I'll be I'll be the torchbearer of this episode there you and, go. and talk us out. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Um please click like if you did. And I want to hear your comments below. What do you guys think about this armor? Yep. Cool, not cool, cling on, not cling on, let us know. And uh we have a lot more discovery stuff coming for you. Like we said, this is Discovery Week. Yes. So you're going to see a lot of Discovery stuff from us. Because we're filming it all in one day. Because we have a weekend to catch up on. But that's okay. Yes. We love it. And we love you guys. And we love doing we do. it. So, anyway, until next time, guys. I'm Captain Foley. And I am Commander Goggins. See you guys soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>